Hi my YouTube friends, this is my British computer guy here with a video for you. So today's video didn't quite go according to plan. Um, my vi vision for this particular video was to try and recreate a problem that I'd had when I first started getting into LED stuff. Um, basically what it was, I originally ran, my first project was to run some LED strips around the uh, ceiling of my office. Um, and it worked great to start off with. I was able to get everything up and problem, no problem at all. Power injected the back end and ran the wires up to the, the entry point for the data. And as soon as I turned it on, the LEDs were flickering. Um, patterns weren't consistent. It was consistent all the way around, which was great, but I wasn't getting, something, something was off. And I couldn't, I couldn't, it took me a minute to try and figure out why. And um, with the help of Chris Mayer, thank you Chris, he's a really big YouTube guy into LED and WLED projects and he's recently been branching out into other areas of LED goodness. So there's a link down to his channel in the description below. Be sure to go ahead and check him out. It's, it's fascinating stuff, really good videos. He suggested um, putting a resistor in series with the data line. So I thought, okay, I'm not too sure what that would do because surely a resistor would reduce the voltage um, from that data output to the LED strip. So anyway, uh, it, it's only probably about 12, well, less than, less than 12 feet of data cable um, that I have from the ceiling to where the actual ESP32 chip is. So I, I did what he suggested and lo and behold, it actually worked. It corrected the issue completely, um, not had any more issues with it at all and all the effects worked fine. So, after having been in LED for a few months now and been working with these things for quite a while, having built so many other projects, matrices, key lights, that kind of thing, I wanted to go ahead and recreate the problem I had and try and show users how you can maybe overcome it. Because there were actually two options that were presented to me at the time um, I was having the issue. One was the resistor, and it was a 100 ohm resistor. Um, the other was a logic level shifter. Now, I wasn't too sure about logic level shifters. I have bought some, but I haven't had a chance to play with them yet. But what I was going to do is going to, I was going to go ahead and recreate the issue, run maybe a six or seven foot length of data cable or long enough to go ahead and cause issues on the LED strip and then look at solutions to go ahead and figure out, you know, what, what's the easiest way of fixing this problem. Um, now, if you're not familiar with how a logic level shifter works, I'm going to be posting a video on that here shortly, but there's a really good video on Resin Chem Tech's uh, YouTube site. So if you want to go ahead and check him out, there's a link also down in the description below. He's got some fantastic stuff um, with regards to LED and WLED and microelectronics, and he does a really good job of explaining uh, how logic level shifters work. And in fact, one of his videos, he actually goes into great detail explaining why he uses them and um, I was like great okay so it gave me a good understanding of how they work so basically not in a nutshell they it takes the three volts output from the data pin on your ESP32 chip and ramps it up to five volts because obviously five volts travels further along cable than three volts and that technically should solve your data problem so my, my video that I was getting ready to go ahead and share with you was an experiment to go ahead and recreate the issue and show you some creative solutions to go ahead and fix it. As I thought, um, things didn't quite go according to plan, as you're about to find out. So sit back, relax, enjoy, get a cup of coffee and uh, enjoy the next 15 minutes and uh, watch and tell me what you think. I'm really curious to know um, what's going on at the end of this video because I can't, I can't explain it. Is that cryptic enough for you? Here we go. Let's get into it. Okay, so I've got it hooked up. Um, three amp, five volt USB charger. This is supplying power to the chip, and then it's all. This is also supplying power directly to the LED strip. So let's go ahead and turn it on. Okay, so I already configured the the app with a few presets. 
uh, just like Mr. Resin Chem Tech did. Uh, I was going to use exactly the same ones that he did, but I'm, I'm actually missing one that he has. So I'm going to go with Flow Pacifica Pride 2015, Sweep and Wipe Random. So I've got a, some WS2812Bs, 16.4 feet, so 300 LEDs in total. Uh, we're going to be using this for the demonstration. And uh, right now, we're not. this is zero length okay so we've just got it's going straight from the esp32 so let's just check all the different ones we've got flow okay we've got pacifica which we just had a second ago pride 2015 not noticing any data issues at all sweep and wipe random no issues okay so let's go ahead and add uh, let's say six feet approximately six feet to the to the system um, I know he did three feet on his but I've got I feel good things about this okay so I couldn't find a three foot piece of uh, cable that I had cut to size I've only got like 11 12 foot lengths so I'm just gonna go all out and give it a try with a, with a 11 foot piece of cable so we've got 11 feet of 18 gauge three strand or three core, sorry, uh, wire going straight to the LED strip, and once again, WS2812. So let's go ahead and turn these on. All right, solid seems to work fine. Now let's go ahead and go through the these again. I'm sure we're going to see some sort of signal degradation, but let's take a look. Okay. Well, no signal, no, no, nothing, nothing obvious there. It looks like it's working fine flow let's try Pacifica yeah also really bright it's nice it's good okay so everything's good there pride 2015 sweet and white random and I'm going to use the same presets on each of the tests okay so that works fine hmm. all right so this is 11 feet I mean Mr. Chem Resin Tech managed about three feet with his before he had signal degradation. I'm already up to 11 feet. So let's add another 11 or 12 foot piece and see what we get from there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the presets. Let's turn it on. All right, so 22 feet and from there. There, we've got power. So far, looking good. Let's take a look at the effects. Flow. Seems to work fine, not seeing any data artifacts. 22 feet, this is pretty good. Okay, I'm kind of impressed by this. Pacifica. Again, looks good. Right, looks fine. So I'm not seeing any kind of flickering or data artifacts at all on that channel. Okay, and wipe. Yeah, nothing, pretty solid. Max brightness. We'll check voltages as well here in a minute, just to make, just to see where we're at with that. So I'm sure at some point we're going to have some issues. All right, let's let's add some more cable to it. So we're at 22 feet so far. Let's add another, maybe another 10, 12 feet. All right, so we added an extra 13 feet of cable. I had to move to a, like a, a black cable now because I think I've run out of the white. Oh no, I've got some more white here. I'll use that later if we need to. Okay, so we're we're at, what is this 30? 35 feet so far, so let's go ahead and give this a try. Okay, well, it's powering on, that's a good sign. Not flickering. Not really even seeing any kind of voltage drop in this. I mean, looking a little, maybe a little bit dimmer towards the end. Okay, let's go to the presets. Flow is looking good. Pacifica looking good. Right, let's turn the light out. Uh, 
tried. Also looking good. No, no data loss. I'm, I'm kind of confused why he had such. Why Mr. Resin Chemtech, Resin Chemtech, had so many issues with his board. I mean, I'm at 35 feet. This is literally the data line is going straight from the ESP32 along 35 feet of cable into the the far end of that uh, this, this WS2812B LED strip. Okay. No flickering, no degradation, no voltage drop, no nothing. It's looking great. Okay, I won't bore you with the rest of this one, but yeah, that's fine. It's working fine. So let's go ahead and add some more cable. So we just added 16 feet. We are now up to a total of 51 feet from the ES direct output of the ESP32. Straight run, 51 feet all the way to the end of the LED strip. So let's hey, see how this goes. Let's try power up. Okay, so that looks fine. Uh, let's try the presets. Okay, I'm not getting any signal degradation at all. The data is absolutely fine. Now I'm wondering if it is. I'm wondering if on Resin Tech Chem Tech's build, it was because of the wire he was using. Maybe. I mean, this is insulated three core, and it's specifically designed for LED use. But as I say, right now we're at 51 feet, and I'm not seeing any issues at all. The brightness is nice and even. Max brightness, not really seeing any voltage drop, even at 51 feet. And the, the power supply I'm using is a 5 volt, 3 amp USB phone charger. Not seeing any flickering, no dropouts. No, nothing bad. All right, let's go ahead and try a solid color for, for giggles. Um, okay, solid color. Let's try white. Yeah, but yeah, there's literally just no color degradation. Just as bright. Well, I've got one more piece of cable. I don't know how long it is, but we'll go ahead and add it to this and see if that does the trick. Okay. So we added an extra 16 feet to the setup. Plugged in. And this is the route. I actually went into my, my kind of my den, my game room. Just to lay out the cables, it wasn't quite so coiled up. So, and here we are, here's the strip. All the way back there. So, there's 64 feet. Let's turn the power on, see if it works. Alright, so we got power. Okay, good. And let's look at the colors. Flow, okay. All looking good so far. Not seeing any kind of flickering or anything as usual, out of the ordinary. Let's try some other things while we're here. Uh, effects. It's chun chun. Color loop, yep. Super bright as well. I mean, it's 
really bright. Let's go ahead and check the, uh, let's put on a solid effect and do white. Usually the camera can pick up better than the naked eye if there's any kind of voltage drop. Uh, not really seeing any. To be honest, it looks as bright at the beginning as it does at the end. All right, so I have no idea what's going on. Um, is is signal uh, is this signal degradation really a thing? Um, I mean, this is sixty four feet. Thank you. It's enough. Excuse me. Sorry about that. So. The question, my question is for you guys, and please post in the comments down below, do I really need a logic level shifter? I mean, there's no point in me doing the rest of the experiment because honestly, I can't even make it have an issue. Um, I'm running 64 feet of cable, of data cable and power cable directly to this set of uh, WS2812Bs. Um, and I'm not getting any kind of issue at all. It's, it's perfect. Okay, so, as you all just saw, I could not recreate the problem. I don't know why. I'm perplexed. I was pushing all that information and data 67 feet, almost 70 feet. I didn't really have any light degradation. Everything was consistent. No issues with the data. Whereas Resin Chem Tech's issue failed after 3 feet. I don't know. I don't understand that. I don't get it. Yeah, if, if you know the answer to why I wasn't having an issue, I, I, I couldn't recreate the problem at all. Um, I was really hoping I could. That way I could go ahead and get into logic level shifters. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and post my own video on logic level shifters, which is just specifically for that. I'm going to show you soldering. I'm going to show you how to, how to wire them up and give you the basics of what they do. Um, I know there are other videos online as well that deal with that. And I just mentioned earlier at the beginning of this video but uh, I wanted to create my own. So thank you to everybody who subscribed recently. I truly appreciate your support and uh, I'm looking forward to making more content for you guys to view. So you all have a fantastic day. Uh, take care and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.